Hi, I'm Pastor Chuck from East Earl, Pennsylvania, and you're watching Trucker Josh on TJV. Good morning everybody. Excuse that bug that's pretty much right in front of the camera there. I've got to go deliver these tanks. There's my crane just over there to the left. <clears throat> now how do I get into this work site? Aha, right where that gravel truck's coming out. So we pretty much just stayed across the street. I have an eight o'clock unload appointment. The crane is there. Now I'm gonna be there. Looks like they just finished unloading the guy before me. That's perfect. So whenever you come and fuel up at this Loves here on I-94 and Russell Road, just at the Wisconsin border with Illinois, uh, south of Milwaukee, think of me, I delivered one of these tanks. wait here for them to tell me where to go. Of course, as soon as I get here, it's busy, busy, busy. Or maybe it was busy all along and I just happened to slip in just at the right time. I'm gonna go over there and ask those guys where they'd like me. So this guy's pulling out. This guy on the right here is going somewhere with his little scoop. I'm gonna give this guy a little more room with his trailer. There we go. Okay, he's telling me I, I drive in and then I go and uh, pull a U-turn the back of the site somewhere. I guess we'll find out when we get there. So this was the tank that was delivered by the other guy before me. Never met him before. This lot is super dusty and my engine fan just kicked on for these guys to lift a whole cloud of dust. Okay. Let's see, how am I gonna turn around here? All done. Just unloaded them here. So this will be the Love's Travel Stop, like I've been telling you. In, I think it's called Russell. It's on Russell Road, right at the border with Wisconsin. If you guys ever come here once it's finished, that's gonna be the scale right there behind these tanks. The tanks that I delivered here are the water and oil separator. So when you're at the diesel fuel islands, there's always that drain on the ground, right? Where all the excess, the, the runoff goes into. All that runoff goes into these tanks, which separate the oil from the water. And then uh, let the oil back into the ground and then keeps the, I mean, pardon me, lets the water back into the ground and keeps the oil in that small tank right there. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's still too early. But hey, my job's done here. So now we head over to Evansville, Wisconsin and begin the next job. It's pretty cool, I can't wait to see what this looks like once it's finished. Let's see if I can figure out how to get out of here now. I think that truck is leaving right now. So I'll be able to just go out after him. Yeah, there he goes, okay good. That makes it easier. Go back across the street, grab a coffee and Check the trailer over, make sure that this load didn't do anything to the trailer, which I doubt it did, but just to double check, you know. We'll be on our way. It's such a dusty, dusty yard. 
they're almost using sand. <laughs> All right, so we're here tying down our next load. Now I've got all the straps thrown over and put through already. It's really nice at this place where we're picking up here, uh, they put ropes through there so that it's easy for you to, you tie the, the strap to one end and you pull it through because I'm not allowed to get up on the trailer here at any time. They have ladders and stuff I can use if I need to. Do you see I got all these straps on the load, go through there, up and over there, and now, I make sure that all of these straps have a ratchet. These slide, right? You gotta make sure that everyone has a ratchet that needs one all the way along the trailer, otherwise I gotta undo them later. Uh, because once you like, on this side of the strap here, like here, this side here you can see that this hooks into the bottom of the trailer right there, you see? Like, like that. So once that's hooked in, it blocks the slide rail here and you can't slide the ratchets past anymore. So you gotta make sure all the ratchets are in the proper place right away. So now I'm gonna wind them all up. I gotta put corner guards on all of the corners because you don't want this steel to eat through your straps. That'll happen very quickly if you're not careful. So what I do to reach all the way up there, to put my corner guards up there, this ladder right here that they provide. Not allowed to get up on the trailer at all. So yeah, that's what I'm dealing with right now. I'm just gonna tighten it all up. And this load's going up to Alberta. I'm the guy to bring it. Somebody's building something up there. I'm kind of vital to their uh, building plans. Makes me feel important. Not gonna build your building without Trucker Josh bringing you your stuff. And that's the finished product. Whew. That took a little while and a lot of energy, but we got her done. This load is not going anywhere. I got my tarps back here all tied down as well. Whew. Let's hit the road. Oh my, whoo! First things first, we gotta go find somewhere to take a shower. Whoo! Uh-huh, I'm a dirty trucker. I'm a dirty, stinky trucker, we gotta go find a shower. Whoo! First pilot flying day that we, that we go past, we're gonna stop in and grab some fuel and a nice, cool shower. Not cold, that's too that's too much, too extreme. Just cool, a nice cool shower. Oh man. Okay. So I got my paperwork here. I gotta go back to the guard shack and uh, let them know that I'm done here. And we can give her on down the road. Rolling out of Evansville with the AC blasting. It's a hot one today. Let me see how hot it is outside. It says it's 25 Celsius, so that's actually not that hot. Probably like 80 Fahrenheit. Feels hot, sure feels hot, I'll tell you how much. So uh, 1,210 kilometers from this exact spot to our yard back in Manitoba. I'm gonna get there tomorrow afternoon and uh, I'll go home for the night and then Friday midday or so, around noon, I'm gonna head, head on out to uh, that, that. Okay, I didn't even see you coming there, buddy. I am doing the speed limit. Okay. Uh, what was I saying? Saturday we're gonna head out to Fort McMurray. We'll get there Sunday night, unload Monday morning. It says that I could deliver Monday or Tuesday. I'm gonna have to make sure that my appointment time is Monday morning because uh, I want to pack in as much work as I can this month yet. Our roof is getting redone uh next week i believe yeah it's almost next week already yep Woo! finally so that'll be done that'll be our biggest summer project that's done and all i got to do is rip down the rest of that lean-to beside our garage 
And then all of my summer goals, summer projects for this year are done. I had three projects, three goals for the summer. One was to get the roof done on the house. The other was to sell the Freightliner. And the third is that lean-to. That's good. And then this winter time, our goal is going to be to probably start renovating our master bedroom. <coughs> doing as much as we can inside. And then uh, doing all the piping and stuff underneath there while it's still kind of cool under there. And then next spring, we'll finish it up. We'll have a new master bedroom for next summer. Unless the plans change, but that's the plan right that's the plan right now. Black River Falls, Wisconsin. I'm actually not gonna fuel up here. I'm gonna wait till I'm a little closer to home. I still got over half a tank. I'll fuel tomorrow. Oh, so, I'm gonna run in here and have a shower. You know what, maybe I should fuel. Maybe I should fuel. No, 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 I'm gonna fuel tomorrow. I'm gonna fuel tomorrow. I already made up my mind, can't change my mind now. Made up my mind, gonna fuel tomorrow. So we're just gonna go find a parking spot somewhere around here, as close as we can, and uh, quickly run in there. I still want to get a couple hours down the road. I have four and a half hours available to me to drive today yet, though so I'm. Uh, Karen, 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 Karen. I still like you. Let's not let's not damage that relationship. What do you want now? Ding dong to you too. Is that sort of like your way of whistling at me? I'm married. Back off, Karen. What's this guy doing? Why did he like nosedive into those trailers? Well, what are you, are you? Okay, so that big open space, you think you can squeeze her in there, bud? You got about six open spaces. Do you think you can make it? Don't go too fast now. Don't go too fast. That's six empty spaces. That's quite a tight spot. I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but uh, you know I'm looking into hiring drivers in the future to drive some trucks for me, right? Uh, not under my own running rights yet, but just to drive uh, some trucks that I own. And I'm going to be a little picky. You know, I'm not just going to hire any guy off the street with a CDL, because you know some of these guys, they seem to get their CDLs in a cereal box, and I'm going to have to make sure that whoever I hire didn't get their CDL out of a box of Cheerios. <laughs> Maybe it'll be one of you. I trust you guys. You guys are good drivers, aren't you? But uh, that doesn't mean that they have to have, you know, years and years and years of experience. There's a lot of companies out there who won't give drivers a shot, won't give them a chance. And I don't think that's fair. I mean, for me too, I had to do five years of local before I got onto a bigger truck over the road uh, to gain experience because no one wants to hire someone with no experience. But uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is I want to hire people with common sense and good hand-eye coordination, good motor skills, good backing skills, someone that I'm going to trust not to wreck my truck because a truck like this has, uh, I have a $5,000 deductible on these trucks. It's a pretty high deductible. We could probably get that down to $2,000. Uh, but let's say even on the good end, a $2,000 deductible. If my driver has an accident, hits the ditch, and, uh, you know, messes up the truck a little bit, maybe it needs a new hood and new mirror, I mean, let's say it easily adds up to ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 of damage. Well, that driver gets to go home and wait for the truck to be fixed. I'm stuck with the deductible. I got to pay that two to $5,000 deductible because my driver wrecked my truck. 
So it's a risk. That's the risk I take in hiring someone. I have to trust that they're not going to wreck my truck. Not only do I want them to take care of the truck so it lasts a long time, that it, that they keep it maintained, that they treat it well, that they don't abuse it, that they run it nice, that they don't gun it everywhere they go, that I want my trucks to last a long time. I also got to make sure that they're not going to back into somebody because it, in a, in a parking lot, if they back into a truck and completely tear off their hood, well, it's about a $10,000, somewhere around there, could be $10,000 of damage. Again, two to $5,000 out of my personal pocket. So that's why I say like I've got, I can totally understand why companies are picky. They want drivers they can trust. And it's, it's hard to build that trust when you have no experience. I understand that, but that's my biggest fear, you know? As I get more trucks and I build up my own little mini fleet and who knows where life's going to take me, I'm going to start off with just a few trucks running it, like not under my own running rights, like I said, but I have a few trucks running and uh, it's a risk I'm going to have to deal with and there's a level that I sort of got to be comfortable with stomaching, le level of risk, because uh, it can go downhill in a hurry if you put the wrong guy behind the wheel or the wrong woman. Uh, anybody can have accidents equal opportunity so I don't know I don't know what I'm gonna do but uh, you know I can I can guarantee you something if I do nothing I will not be successful but if I take a risk I have a chance of being successful and building my business up to the point where you know maybe one day I can sit at home and there's other people running my trucks for me and I can spend my time with my kids maybe my grandkids at that time Maybe I can be doing a different business at home at the time while my trucks are running. That's, that's uh, the overall goal. But in order to get to that goal, you got to take a lot of risk. Got to take a lot of risk. That's why I don't like all these like people who get jealous of people who are successful. I'm like, yeah, I don't know how many times that person failed before they got that successful. Don't try to tear them down. Let them enjoy their success. Let them enjoy their yacht and their, their big summer home down in Florida and you know all this stuff all the stuff they have that people get jealous of it's easy to be jealous of them you know what they who knows how many times they failed before they got to that success and who knows how much risk they had to take to build that up you know it could all come crumbling down in a month you know you know what I'm talking most of you know what I'm talking about I'm, I'm just preaching to the choir here aren't I I'm gonna quiet I, I'm gonna be quiet and go in and have a shower I'm gonna leave you guys in here though if you don't mind uh, I like my privacy when I shower it's not that kind of YouTube channel. This is a family-friendly YouTube channel. That truck is really tailgating that SUV up there. Wow. I don't know why people do that, you know? It's like right on his bumper. I get you want to go two miles an hour faster, but really, you're going to put everybody's life at risk. That guy should be getting out of his way in all honesty. The four-wheeler should be moving over to the right because he's obviously the truck wants to go faster than him but wow I hope I hope nothing happens with that. So we're here in Minneapolis in St. Paul. I know the truck's going to go around on the right. Okay. Why don't people move over? You know what? So often I see that too. Like I run slower than most traffic. I'm governed and stuff and I do it for fuel economy as well. And when I see a, a vehicle pass me with like a long lineup behind them, it frustrates me when they don't turn back over into the right lane, you know? They just sit in the left lane with that. Obviously, if you look in your mirror, there's a convoy of people behind you that want to go faster than you. If they won't move over, they'll force everybody to pass them on the right, go around on the right. Like, eh, people are beyond me, you know? It's like they don't think or they just don't care. One of the two. So I want to get through the city. I was thinking of stopping on, uh, oh, there's a cop over there. Oh, uh-oh, somebody's getting a spanking. Somebody's getting a spanking. Bad boy. Bad, bad. Maybe it's a girl. I was going to stop on the, on the east side of Minneapolis, St. Paul, in Wisconsin. But I figure, you know what, traffic will be lighter now going through the city than in the morning, so. Now let's get through the city. This is a pretty big city to get through. A lot of traffic, especially in the morning during rush hour. Sail through the city tonight, and then I, I don't have to worry about that tomorrow. 
2.2 kilometers. Keep to the right on I-694 West, US 10 West. Thanks, Karen. I don't think I'll get lost going through here. This is my home stretch. I can do this with my eyes closed. I'm not going to demonstrate, don't worry, but I can probably get home from here with my eyes closed. I'm just saying. That's Petro off to the right there, Clearwater, Minnesota. That's where we're going to call home for tonight. Hopefully they got parking here for me, but I have a feeling it's going to be packed. If it is, I have an extra hour on my clock that I can get to the next nearest place, but I really hope I can park here. I really like this truck stop. Clearwater Travel Plaza. It's a Petro, uh, not a Petro Canada. It's a Petro Stopping Center. It's a US company. They got an awesome truck stop here. They got everything you need. It's almost like a little mini trucker mall, almost. Not quite like the Iowa 80, but the Iowa 80 is sort of a, a beast of its own, you know? Apparently it's the world's largest truck stop. The world's largest, like there's no bigger ones anywhere. Turn, out and then turn left into 100 meters. Karen, no, I just I just told you I'm stopping here for tonight. You know what would be cool? If Karen could tell me where an open parking spot was. Why can't you do that, Karen? Look at this place. I don't even know where to begin looking. to begin. Well, we found a parking spot, but it was on the street behind the truck stop. But it worked. No one told us to move. There's no no parking signs or fire hydrants or anything, so that was our night. Right, Chevy? What a day. What a day. So tomorrow we go home. You ready to go home? You want to go home? Oh boy. Oh boy. Let's do it, man. Thanks for watching today, everybody. Tune in tomorrow for another vlog. Don't forget to share my videos because YouTube doesn't like to recommend them like they used to. So if you think that YouTube should recommend my videos to other people to watch, you'll have to recommend them for me. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. Talk to you tomorrow. Hi, my name is Ethan, and I'm from sunny Central Florida. You're watching Trucker Josh and Diesel on the best channel on YouTube, TJV. Enjoy.